hang out here for a bit. I feel like uh, what we're going to do tonight is get, basically going to chat about, you know, uh, artist representation, ethnicity, that kind of stuff. You've, this is a rarity in Sydney where you'll see three Asian people on a stage. We're not the same person. Yeah. <laughs> this is... If anyone takes a photo, there's going to be photo evidence that Ben and I aren't the same person, which is <laughs> frankly going to do wonders for both of our careers. Um, but uh, before we kick off things uh, sort of officially, uh, and, and Ben and his mother, uh, Jenny, are going to just do a little uh, kind of uh, lone time just by themselves. I'm going to get out of the way. Uh, we're to be here on Gadigal land. Um, the Gadigal of the Eora Nations, like all First Nations Australians, have been telling stories here for tens of thousands of years. Um, and we're particularly grateful to elders past and present that we can, t can continue telling stories here on what is and what will always be Aboriginal land. It's also a great honour to be here with you planning a murder, it seems. That's really what it feels like in this room tonight. Um, um, no, it's, it's great to be in Customer's House with you. Uh, we, we wanted to just start off by telling a story, but it's so funny. As, as much as we want to tell our story, I think it's best told in case studies and just in details, right? The granular kind of stuff. And as much as my story is about me growing up gay and Asian in coastal Queensland in the 90s during the height of Hansonism as my parents' marriage fell apart, the classic Australian story, <laughs> it actually starts before I was born in a way when mum arrived in Australia. Now, just to get like specific in the details, Mum, you were just telling us what you couldn't buy in Australia when you first arrived. What? Ross. <laughs> Ross. I might be in 1975. Like, no, I can't find any bras. So it was just like the bras that you came with, and that was it. That's you... it. So every time I go back to Hong Kong, I have to buy my bras. You know, I went to my cousin, they opened the suitcase, and the cousin officer. What's all these bras? <laughs> I just check out the size, they're all for me. Because I said to him, I can't find any size of bra that fits me. And that's the origin story so, of how mum became a black market bra seller. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so mum migrated to Australia in the mid-1970s, um, met dad. After how many months did you marry? Three months, I met him. That is a whirlwind romance. And then, and then they did what um, migrants do so well when they arrive in a new country, which is breed a lot. Um, so how, how many of us are there, Mom? Five. I have six pregnancies. I lost one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, six. Yeah. Actually, I have six babies. So I'm kind of number three and four, in a way. And it's a middle child. Yeah. Which I kind of love because you get away with stuff. And, um, and what was it like growing, like raising children who were very bad at speaking Cantonese and had accents like this. <laughs> if I have an only child, they will speak my language. Because when you're five, once you start preschool, they will come back home and gilly gulu gilly gulu. You can't compete with five of them. Is that your racist interpretation of what white people sound like when they speak English? <laughs> gilly gulu. <laughs> and all that, they knew that mom can speak their language, just everything is quicker when uh -huh. you're five. Yeah, with all the news, especially news lessons from schools. Uh -huh. So the meeting from school and everything, so yeah, I said like, no, it's not my fault that they didn't speak my language. <laughs> <laughs> and I always said, when I speak Cantonese, like, I sound like a he got brain damage. <laughs> that, that's me when I speak because my, my Cantonese is so bad. Um, there will be some of you in the room who um, don't know who we are and we don't blame you and you were dragged by your partners and you're very good partners for being here. Um, so I'll give, give some context. So I'm a writer and in 2010 I wrote a book called The Family Law that was a black comedy memoir about growing up. And, um, and then several years later that became a TV show on SBS that... Um, is based on our family story, and there's a character in there. Oh, is that microphone better for... Yeah. Oh, okay, thank you. And that TV show is now on SBS. Um, we're, just, uh, we're just finishing up its third season at the moment, and there is a character in there called Benjamin Law, and there's a character in there also called Jenny Palm, which mm -hmm. is not... So that's why, that's, that's why we're here. I just wanted to <laughs> give, some, give some context. So, Mum, I'm a writer. Did you have any problems with that? 
<laughs> what's what's the what's the bigger shame for an Asian mother? If your son's a writer or if your son's gay? <laughs> no, personally, yeah, no, not me. Like as a mother of the ABC children, Australian-born Chinese, I'm always very really proud. I encourage your passion. Like that saying, you never work a day. So with Ben, you at school, he's into drama, photography, debates. He never debate with your mom. Mom's always right. But was was it? It was always great when we were having an argument, and you'd be like, "Go away, debating champion." <laughs> just like that would just wrap up. Because the argument. Chinese culture, mom is like, yeah, this is a cheeky thing, you know. Like you don't debate with your mom, respect your mom. But then I'd win an argument, and that, that's how she'd seal good it up. Good argument, good argument. She'd be like. Yeah, very good point, but I'm still your mum. <laughs> Which I think is a fair point. Yeah, um, respect, respect your parents, but you your know, seniors. Th this series, Artists and Their Mums, is mm. uh, uh, focused on the fact that a lot of people from ethnic communities, it isn't a prized or valued thing to have children who are artists. So, like, why were you okay with that? Like, and I should point out that there's five kids and I'm a professional writer. Our, my younger sister is a photojournalist and a photographer. And my youngest sister, Michelle, is a playwright and a screenwriter. What, what happened? So yeah. there's three artists in the family. Bit typical Asian family, even now. Parent like, no, no, no. Being an artist is not a proper job. And so you end up homeless. And then Tammy said, yeah, mom, I'll be homeless. <laughs> <laughs> but she finished her PhD. She, uh, she worked for Fairfax and she's a lecturer at UQ. So I'm very proud of all the artists. Yeah. Um, I consider her really lucky. Being an artist, you have to have a, people appreciate your work and you need a touch of luck. Mm. So I'm really lucky. All my uh, Benjamin, Tammy and Michelle is really lucky to be an artist. Yeah, in Asia, even now, they say you want to be an artist, you end up homeless. <laughs> Asian family will encourage you to be like your brainy doctor, dentist, lawyer, never artist. Mm. Um, before we get Michael Hing back up here on stage to probe us live, um, we've been asked to do a blitz of questions. Um, these have been suggested by the organisers, and I'm going to ask you, um, should we ask each other... Do you have any hidden talents, Mum? If... Oh, lots. Because my best, the best year of my life, I'm breeding. I'm very fertile. My gyno said, you better tie your tube, Jenny. You're never-ending babies. I think Dad just had to blink at Mum and she'd get pregnant. Oh, yeah, my ex were my idiot ex. Hopefully, like, they'll be all boys. And Michelle was born, like, not happy. He wished Michelle was a, a boy. The num yeah. yeah. The He's very much a Chinese man of his generation. He still loves typical. his daughters, by the way, but it's just the whole it's just the whole boy girl thing. <laughs> okay, well wait wait a minute. What was your your hidden talent was fertility, is that what you're saying? Reading? I don't think uh, that's a hidden talent. <laughs> photography, yeah. Tell me my daughter that she yeah, she just finished her PhD in photography. She said I'll be a very good um uh, photographer. That's what she said. Jo journalism. What's, Photo journalism. What's your worst habit? Oh, worst habit. Mm. I know what your worst habit is. Irregular sleeping habit. I was about to say, Mum, since she has discovered, like, you know how SBS has SBS and SBS Viceland, for whom Michael works, um, she if there is something captivating on television, she'll fall asleep in front of the TV. Yeah. And we scold her like a child. I, I Get love to bed. binge watch TV. <laughs> um, okay, and final question before we bring it back to Michael. You know, like you seem like you're very relaxed and liberal and accepting about what you wanted your kids to be. But I remember several years ago when I did ask you the question, if you could be Asian tiger mum and determine what five occupations the five kids could have, what would they be? And you were like, you'd be that and that and that. Like it was very confronting to me how quickly... I think a typical, you know, typical Asian, like doctor, lawyers, dentist. I want a hairdresser to have free service. You know how expensive, you know, you go to hairdressers. And I don't mind have a chef. So I can, you know, hopefully... 
and you have a restaurant, mommy eat free, walk in and out. <laughs> what I also loved about that detail is you didn't want a lawyer just for the prestige of having a lawyer child like a lot of Asian parents do. You were like, that, that child would have been very valuable during the divorce. <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. Even buy a house, anything you need a lawyer. But it's very practical, yeah. lawyer, accountant is good, accountant. Yeah, I mean like, and at the end of the day, like dad I know did want us to kind of like be doctors if we could, and he got two doctors, but just not in medicine, we can't say that. Yeah, doctors that can't cure Jokes anybody. Jokes on him. Um, anyway, I think that's our, that's our two person sketch routine done. Uh, Michael, why don't you just... Ask and seamlessly. Un un yes, seg I'm going to segue back, segue to back you. onto this stage. Uh, can we give a round of applause for Ben and Jenny? Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, uh, looking around the audience, there's sort of a, a mixed uh, crowd, by which I mean somehow white people have gotten in here, which is fine. <laughs> I, uh, thank you all for coming. I appreciate you being here. Uh, but I, I guess. Uh, for, their, for, for some people here, they wouldn't have a lot of experience as to what, broadly speaking, Asian and Australian culture is. And I know there are stereotypes and there are different ways we all, uh, you know, uh, represent those stereotypes or perhaps, you know, uh, conflate them or whatever, uh, confound them. So I guess I wanted to start with you guys and see how much uh, Asian stuff you adhere to. You know, you talked about you're not really the, the classic tiger mum. Um, so, but if you want to start off, maybe in, in what ways are you not a typical Asian? Perhaps? Oh, okay. So, okay. So, obviously, being an artist, I don't think mm. that's a, a typical kind of thing to do. And a, a lot of people, even of my generation, who are the ch children of migrants, think it's quite remarkable that our parents have been this kind of flexible. And this was both mum and dad. As much as they're really different people with different parenting attitudes, they were both really, really accepting of that. And I think. Not that they ever told us this explicitly, but they said, I, we always felt that if we worked hard at it and we were good at it and could make money off it, then, then it was actually <laughs> fine, what, whatever we did. Um, we're pretty shit house at speaking Cantonese. Sure. So, like, I understand it. Uh, I just can't speak it very well. I kind of feel it's like... better than me. Yeah, well, I kind of feel like... But you're, you're like, um, how many generations do you go back? Like, eight. It's too yeah, many. Yeah, like, you go, yeah. like, little, 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 yeah. gully, gully, gung, or whatever you said. <laughs> that many, that many <laughs> generations. <laughs> <laughs> that many generations back. So, so I guess we're kind of atypical in that way. Mm. I think by the time, you know, there's something about... This is my theory. When, you, when there are five kids, they've overwhelmed the parents. That we've taken over, we've colonised the house. There's no, there's no room for discipline anymore. So we couldn't, like, even if they were really hardcore about us learning Cantonese, I think we, mm. we held all the cards and we were kind of <laughs> bad about that. Um, but then there were like, a lot of Asian values, like, for mm. instance, you know, respecting education, the fact that, that my parents had moved to Australia and education was, you know, so much more easily come by um, the fact that, you know, my white friends at school, which was basically all my friends except maybe one, um, because I went to a very, very white part of... We lived in a very, very white part of Australia. But, you know, the fact that the way they talked about teachers, the way they talked about school, if we absorbed any of that, it was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Do you agree with that sentiment? Do you, do you agree with what uh, Ben's assessment of things? Yes, in a way. Yeah, we... They were born on the Sunshine Coast. Mm. So... We are uh, yet yeah, uncertain to family, Asian family on the coast, mm. so it's really white. <laughs> yeah. And, you, and there, were, there were some ways in which, like, I never questioned it, but there were other ways that you really did feel it. Like your incident at the clinic counter, remember that? There were sometimes, like, sometimes there were overt examples of racism. Yeah, yeah, I said, like, can I try the lipstick? And then she said to me, the clinic counsellor lady, she said, I don't think you can afford that. And then when I told the story to people, they say, what you, what's your response, Jenny? I said, I was shocked. I don't know what to respond, how to respond, I just walk away. Yeah. I'm like, oh wow. my God, what did she just said to me? You should have stolen it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would have taught her. It's in the early 80s on the Sunshine Coast. Right, yeah. yeah. They would have checked your pockets on the way out, I take it. Yeah. yeah. But the, the, the thing about stereotype that I really believe is that, you know, there are, there are lots of truths in it. That's mm. why they're stereotypes, right? But I think anyone can only be a stereotype if other people looking at that person don't look well, any closer. Mm. You know, like, for instance, my dad 
worked in Chinese restaurants for most of our lives growing up. And a lot of people are like, oh, well, that's, that's a bit of a stereotype. You're portraying a dad working in a Chinese restaurant in your TV show. And I'm like, well, no, I want to, like, in the TV show, if you actually watch it, you know, it, it, it's a three-dimensional character mm. who's complex as any other character I think there is on TV. And that's when I think people cease being stereotypes, when you actually go that extra mile to make them a human being. Well, this is kind of why I wanted to start the discussion there, because we've sort of now set a baseline of what maybe societies or, or the rest of uh, everyone else's expectations of you might be as, a, as an Asian family yeah. living, in, living on the Sunshine Coast. But in so many ways, you've confounded that. Um, so I guess I, I want to move on to now the sort of art side of that. Mm -hmm. And, and w when Ben told you he wanted to become a writer, <laughs> uh, were, were you surprised by that? And then what was the most... Were you surprised that he actually did it? But just don't, I didn't even want to be a writer growing up, did I? Like, did you remember me saying I wanted well, to be a writer? I'm not really surprised because at school, Ben studied drama, photography in the debate team. And so actually he wanted to be on, always on to be on Home and Away, being an actor. Why didn't that turn out? Being a writer is second choice. He was shattered when you, like, he can't get yeah, your OP, you can't get into... No, no, the OP, OP, my OP was fine. That's like your overall position in Queensland, like your, sure. your score. But it's like I, I did that whole, like, I'm, gonna, I'm going to audition the Queensland's version of NIDA, Queensland NIDA. Mm -hmm. and, and I got through one round and then I didn't get through the next and I was just like, but I couldn't comprehend it. I thought, I'm meant to be on Home Away. Like, what, what's going on? How, how far had this fantasy gone? Had you written storylines for an Asian person moving to Summer Bay? Had you... How far? <laughs> and he growing up all his life. And yeah. he was shattered, like... Yeah. Uh... It was really, got really... Got ripped off by the agent as well. Yeah. yeah. Really? So there is an agent in the Family Law yeah. TV <laughs> series, and that, a, a version of that person does exist in real life. Well, let us, and let us peek behind the, 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 <laughs> the curtain then. Yeah. How did you get... Uh, this, is, this is what Asian parents really want to know. How did you get scammed? Yeah, yeah. So basically... And this is terrible. The white people were scamming us. That's <laughs> not how it's supposed to work. Like us on the Sunshine Coast. Oh, no. So, the... so, okay, so on the Sunshine 80s. Coast, which doesn't have a robust film and television industry, to which I'm aware of, um, but for some reason, there was an agent there who was just like, yeah, we, we get your TV work, we get your film work, and you're an, she said this, you're an oriental, and we don't have many of Whoa. those in our books, and that is a precious special thing. And I'm like, yeah, it is. <laughs> you pay a good amount of money. And, so I just, I just, and then you pay, you pay her an upfront fee, and you just assume that you're going to be on Home and Away the next day or something. Never happened. It never happened. <laughs> have, you, have you contacted the producers at Channel 7 since you've sort of become semi-famous? I, well, I do. Well, it's interesting, you know, because like by the time I'm a writer, I don't want to be an actor. Well, and I so... know, but sure, surely, 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 some part of you, in, in the same way that I know I'm never going to play football for Australia, but if they offered me, <laughs> if you a dream cracker, hard enough, if, yeah, if they offered me at the World Cup, do you want to just go and kick a ball around yeah, for yeah, a yeah. bit? I would take it in a second. Absolutely, and I would watch the hell out of that. <laughs> um, but for me, what how it's kind of come full circle is, you know. There's kind of, you know, as much as I was deluded in wanting to be on Home and Away, there's kind of a political kind of project there as well, right? Mm. In that Home and Away and Neighbours really didn't have non-white representation until recently. And the first time Neighbours had an Asian family on that show was the Lim family. Does anyone remember the Lim family who moved in in the mid-90s? And they were, their whole storyline was being accused of barbecuing the, the neighbourhood dog. Dog. Um, Chinese eat dog. Yeah. Chinese eat anything that moves. Yeah. Got four legs except the table. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, that, and then and then when that storyline was resolved, they, they moved back to Hong Kong with their myriad yeah. Pan Asian accents of the <laughs> of the actors. Um, so so, but as a result, like Anthony Brandon Wong, who plays the dad on Family Law, he was in Home and Away back in the day, but he didn't have a very strong storyline. But now I kind of feel like we've been vindicated because Takaya Honda, mm. who has Japanese heritage, who's on the show. He now is one of the biggest stars of Neighbours now, mm. and I feel like home, uh, our show helped give him the exposure to take... You know, You'll take credit for anything. I'll totally take credit for that. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Tapai Honda. We own you. <laughs> um, so, just going back to the second part of my question, Jenny, I, I wanted to know, I think, because you, you expressed so much fear about Ben, you, know, you kept saying, you're going to be homeless, you're going to be homeless, you're going to be homeless, 
What was it like when he started sort of finding success? You know, what was that like for you? Not me, like generally speaking, most Asian parents, not me. So you never, you never, no, doubted them never, at all. never, that no. Is, that, that is... I just encourage them to follow their passion. Like, you know, that saying if you follow your passion, you never work a day. A lot of yeah. people work nine to five and mm. they want to kill their boss. <laughs> but Ben's a boss of himself. You know, work email, say yes to this, no to that. So, you know. Got no so you, nev you, never doubt, you never doubted that he would be happy and successful and for all your children, you, you, you were sort no, of very no, confident no, in them. No, just like follow their passion. I have three artists like Ben, Tammy and Michelle <laughs> in the family tree. And it's really true, like even when I was doing like really shitty writers events back in the day, like I'm doing a thing at a pub, there's 10 people, like mum would be there in the front row, like there's a video camera filming us right now, that's mum's. I'm, a, I'm almost 36 and she's still filming all of my events. And uh, it's like, going in the scrapbook. Yeah, and she, she was like always, like even that version of success was a success for her. Mm. And it's only now looking back that I realise how unusual that is. Not just for an Asian parent, but for any, any parent. Any parent. Uh, if, if I can just, just, if you indulge me to tell you a very, a very quick personal story. Please. I, 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 my, my day job is I do stand up comedy. Yeah. Um, and when I was sort of in, at university, though, I was playing video games a lot, and I got quite good at them. And it got to a point where I was thinking about moving overseas to Korea to play video games. Oh my god, like like league video games. Yeah, like I was going to be a professional video game player. And I had a conversation with my dad, who's the you know head eye surgeon at Westmead West Kids Hospital. And I said to him, Dad, I'm going to move to Korea to play video games. And he said, Michael, that's insane. You need a backup plan. And I said, don't worry. I've got a backup plan. Stand-up comedy. So, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and then my mom and dad did not sleep for about two years after that. <laughs> and I'm just, I, I'm, this is why I find it, that I, I think my parents are quite typical in that regard, in that when I ever expressed an interest in doing an artistic pursuit or something that wasn't, um, uh, you know, I guess traditional, they were scared for me, you know. But I'm just so amazed by that. And were you aware that your 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 mum uh, was encouraging you the whole time? Were you aware of that growing up? No, I was really resentful of it. I completely <laughs> took Stop it for granted. Things, Mom. Yeah, it was kind of like embarrassed that she was stop being so proud of me. Stop like encouraging me. I get it. You love me. Go away. Like it really was that like as a teenager you kind of like are embarrassed or shrink away from yeah. your parents for whatever reason even if they're just being really awesome and loving you he I started guess. writing for Courier Mail like the article I you know those huge one I laminate them like it's one article those columns like that. Yeah. yeah laminate them yeah it's an article and yeah yeah she'd laminate me if she could <laughs> like every like basically when I was writing for the Courier Mail when it was still a broadsheet she like and like this like they were huge, they were huge pages, mm. and she would like take them to the bloody laminating store. I don't even know if they exist anymore. <laughs> and like she would, there would be a shrine. And, and to this, well actually, because mum recently moved out of, out of our childhood home, but when I used to go back, like um, there would be a the laminate. Whole the whole hallway. The whole hallway. Like, yeah. Is the, that, is that the, weird the to bring huge Korean the whole Yeah, no, page. I just didn't bring friends. He's only back. a little bit of the article there. Yeah, but even <laughs> like, um, because it was quite old work by the time we moved out. So there was one, there was one laminated article, article that was stuck to the back of the toilet, and it was like a what article. The toilet? There was an article that I wrote, and I'm like, that's not even good writing, and I just have to look at it every time I took a shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or any guests arrive, so you read my Ben's article when you're sitting there doing a shit. <laughs> Did you rotate the articles in and out to give a variety of reading in the bathroom, or was it always the same article? Uh, same one. Same one. Yeah. <laughs> the sentiment, that's the toilet article. <laughs> yeah, it was a very relaxing it, was, it, was, it facilitated release. Uh, reading that. So then, uh, I guess, if we broaden out this discussion, mm. when you were growing up then, uh, in terms of representation, yeah. when you look, you talked a little bit about Home and Away and Neighbours, but in terms of writers, authors, that kind of thing, were there Asian Australian people or people of Asian extraction who you looked to when you were growing up and you thought, oh, I can see myself doing that? Or were all your role models sort of white Australian or um, you know, 
Australian people. Yeah, pretty much. Um, because Australian media has been white for such a long time, mm. and aggressively so, and it still pretty much is. Like, I, I think we're getting better, but I don't think we should really congratulate ourselves. Because, you know, the stats are 1 in 10 Australians have Asian heritage, and um, that's, that's roughly proportionate to how many black Americans there are in the States. They've had black presidents. Think of how, much, how many you know, black TV shows there are, how much black representation there is in US shows. Where, where are yellow and brown people at? You know, they're just not there. We're so far behind. So even going back to the 80s and 90s when I was growing up, like TV, no. Magazines, catalogs, our local Big W catalog, no. Like, you know, even now in modeling, you don't really see that, or in advertising. It's well, I heard like, that you were a, a brand ambassador for a certain clothing line. Yes, yes, that's true. Later on, I got, I got my own back. Um, <laughs> but... Yeah, no, like in writing, I know that, I know now in retrospect that there were people doing stuff, but the ones that did stand out were the ones I really remembered. Like there was a, a movie called Floating Life in the early 90s that had an etch on war in it and um, was directed by Clara Law. And that really stood out at me because I'm just like, holy shit, like it's Asians and it's set in Australia. Because at that stage, I'm just like watching the Joy Luck Club on VHS over and over <laughs> again. Because like that's kind of the closest thing to a diaspora. And it's not like my parents endured famine or anything, but I'm like, yes, that's my story. That's my story. <laughs> Ooh, uh, when you moved to Australia then in the 70s, uh, Jenny, were you surprised by how white media was, how, how white television was, or did you expect that? Oh, I got no time for TV. Oh, sorry. Twenty four seven, all year round. I was trapped inside a restaurant. Yeah, just working. Yeah, yes, working. Yeah, right. Not a day off. So you didn't uh, uh, for five long years. Five long I'm years. I'm in jail. And you, st <laughs> and you still weren't grateful for encouragement. Then. No, no, because I was a brat. <laughs> it was that classic Australian entitlement. Yeah. So, so then you, when, when you moved to Australia, you're saying you're working. Uh, five long years, and so maybe that's why you didn't think of uh, Ben's career path as, as, as being non-traditional, because you were too busy trying to feed him the ungrateful bugger, you yeah. know what I mean? After I had Ben, I said to my idiot ex, uh, when you have three babies, you need a parent at home, dinner time and all that. So I said to him, I'm not going to work in the restaurant anymore. I don't want to be a full-time mom at home. Yeah. So yeah. you start from Ben, it's full-time mum at home. You got the attention you so dearly craved. Yeah, that's and right. And then only started from that year, uh, in the 80s, yeah, 80... 82, two. I was born. Then I really realised, oh, that's TV. I can mean, watch TV. Mm. <laughs> like, yeah, but they only have time for TV. So then, w w w then you would have presumably been aware of how white, I guess, Australian television yes, was. Then, yes, yes, really white. Well, so as a, as a migrant in the 80s, how did that make you feel? Did you, did it, was it welcoming? Like, it English is my not... second language, so I learned a lot of, like, yeah, the se my second language oh, from so TV. You, you used it to... Yes, yeah, yeah, master my second language. What were you watching and... back then? Home and Away, Neighbours? Mm, not really. I, once SBS was on, I really love SBS. Yeah, mm. yeah. Yes, and... Your yeah, lots of people, future employer, yeah. in many yes. ways. Yes. <laughs> And when we're doing the law school thing, they say oh, about the sex thing. I said, mm. when the TV's on, they have sex scene. And I said, children, children, come and watch. That's how people have sex. Yeah. You don't have to have that talk. And the children said, oh, <laughs> naked. That's how people have sex. And then Michelle said, you know, mom, after they have sex, they'll have a ciggy. <laughs> Michelle always said, mm. <laughs> Funny. I, you, that is not exaggerating. Like, mum would actually sometimes say, "Oh my god, there is the funniest sex scene happening on SBS right now. You should take a look." Um, so while, because I remember when Sex, sex with Sophie Lee was creating national headlines and being brought up in Senate estimates. There were some segments we were kind of like watching as a family, and it's like, oh, isn't S and M culture interesting? Like by the time we were teenagers and stuff, and I was just like, yeah, that's interesting. Well, well, well speaking of uh, the book and uh, I guess you know, sex culture and things, uh, you, you, you've both written a sex advice 
book. Mm. Uh, yes. and, and I could, I mean, it's just, it, it wasn't in the 10 year plan, Michael. It just kind of, it just kind of happened. Uh, but it, uh, would, you, would you trace to a reading from that at this point? I feel like this is a, this is a, this was, this is a very natural segue into the, uh, into the reading in the library. Well, look, my, um, there might not be enough, I'm straining with her vision at the moment, but I'll give some background into this book. So about how many years ago now? Did six the, years. About six years ago. Yeah, because Ben have a fan base, uh, thanks to the editor of uh, Lizard Brow. Mm -hmm. Which is He's a magazine like, that comes yeah, out of Melbourne. Yeah, what about your mum and you have a... A sex advice Yeah, mm -hmm. sex and relationship. I'm like, me? Really? <laughs> and then Ben said, okay, why not have a try? Do it, mum. So, so by the time, like, the family law had come out, like, mum had kind of built this cult following for being so frank uh, with her talk about sex and sexual function and all of that stuff. And so, you know, every, basically once every quarter when um, the Lizard Brow had an issue out, mm. they would send us all these sex and relationships advice problems and mum... It really actually brought us close together because we we would talk on the phone. By that stage, I was living in Sydney and mum was in Brisbane. And we're like, okay, we're doing it. And we were like figuring out, like, we, we talked about sex and stuff, but like when people are bringing up stuff like, you know, my boyfriend wants to dress as a clown during sex and I find that really terrifying. So I'm like, mum, what do, you, what do you think about? Oh, but, we, but it's also caused arguments. Like that, what was that one? About? I love it when me, me and Ben disagree, like Margaret and David. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to read that, uh, the Mama's Rave Religious. Oh, I, I forget, I think, I, 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 I'm yeah, not she sure. wants to stay over we can, we can and the it. son is at uni. So, what are we going to do? Yeah, he's like, you know, oh, when so, you're a so teenager. Wait, he, he, was, he was in Perth, is that right? Is that the so same So the mum wanted to come the and visit wanted to stay, but for a few nights. He said, what am I going to do? And he's like, I'm going to have I sex with my girlfriend <laughs> every day and night. And mum and I differed in our response to this, to this young man <laughs> whose mum wanted to visit for like two weeks, stay in the house, over which time he would be deprived of sex. You said... Mum was very religious, you know, sex... Before marriage and yeah. all that, what I'm going to do? And so, what advice did you give? I said, respect your mom. You can have sex with the rest of your life. <laughs> so, to say, mom, of course, mm. you can come and visit me. You know, dot dot dot, and you can send mom away. You know, to go and have a museum tour a exhibition. <laughs> this is time you can have sex with your girlfriend. And I said, respect your mother's special Chinese culture, you know, like, yeah, of course ask your mom to stay. And then Ben said, mom, two weeks is a bloody long, long time as a teenager, no sex for two weeks. <laughs> and then like, yeah, you, you just have to control yourself. You respect your mother. <laughs> like, you know, but mom, then mom, but mom, mom made a threat to me in the book where she said, if you put down, like, telling your mom not to stay or that she could stay in a hotel for a little bit, you were basically, what did you say? You'd be like... Like, <laughs> she was like, I'll disown you or I'll cut you or something. Like, it's in the book. It's in the book. What? Uh, so she was my quite, son. quite frightening. <laughs> so, did you take that personally? Was, was there ever moments like that where the advice was a way for you to talk to each other about your relationship? Um, well, look, as much as my family likes talking about sex and all things bodily and Clearly. bodily functions, we don't like talking about our own personal... I just feel like that's... Like, if my sister starts, uh, everyone just starts screaming because we're all so grossed out. Oh, trying to talk about your personal, your sex life and all that. But Tammy and Michelle doesn't no. mind talk about their discharge. Yeah, yeah, they do actually. My sisters talk about that quite, quite a bit. Horrifying, my heterosexual brother. Um, no, I'm into it. I'm woke. <laughs> I love it. Talk about whatever. Um, but. Yeah, no, in terms, of, in terms of when we have discussions, it's kind of like we tease it out a bit because mum will write her notes about what she wants to say about mm. what her initial thoughts are. And then I'll kind, of, I'll kind of keep interrogating her. I'm like, yeah, but what if, you know, what if the mum being there is actually going to compromise the, the, the mother-son relationship? So we'll go down all these different avenues to try to see things from these people's perspectives, but maybe it's kind of a surrogate conversation about us, oh, so I don't know. <laughs> and I used to say, no hate mail, please. I'm like, because my answer's very blunt and very honest from my heart and soul. 
And I used to say, no hate mail, please. And then people say, oh, of course, like, I don't understand your mum roses. Of course, no hate mail. <laughs> Luckily, though, Ben, you're, you're not a stranger to, uh, to hate mail, so you kind of happily cop it all, don't you? Oh, yeah, I, I get strong off it. <laughs> no, but whenever, whenever there is something that does involve my mum, or if, like, I even post on Instagram about her, like, there's such a gorgeous outpouring of love and warmth towards her. Like, she's got this very strong fan base, to the point where... Because she she wears uh, she always wears a wide brimmed red cap. It's very UV conscious. Um, she she gets recognised uh, oh. occasionally. You know, your style, from your look. Yeah, but it's great. It's great that you know. I I grew up in a family thinking, you know, my family's very very different in some very fundamental ways, and because they're different, that's something to be ashamed of. And it took me a very very long time to be like, actually. The, the fact, fact that we're Asian Australian and specifically Chinese Australian is great, and I love that. I love that we're that we've got a Cantonese heritage. I kind of think, you know, the fact that my parents split up that really made us different from the rest of the school. It's a very conservative school, and it made it very public as well because my family was so large. But now I think, well, how like how incredible that my that you know mum endured that and survived that and raised all of us solo and you know so it's it's gratifying to me to see that when you know mum's presented in any kind of way in a public forum like there's this just a rush of love towards her because you know she had to raise us almost single-handedly for a, for a really long time and in that period you don't really get to engage in a public level that that much it it, it sounds like before that outpouring of love was sort of publicly on the record, though, were, were you not... Uh, I, I would be terrified of involving my mum or my family in anything I do. Yeah. Were, were you, were you, not, not, not for them, but, I mean, for the public and the whatnot, you know, your mum saying, no, hate mail, for example. Were you, were you, not, were you not worried that the, sort of the haters would, would, would you know, uh, would, it, would attack people very close to you in that respect then? Or were you sort of just like, at this point, you were just like, ah. Water off a duck's back. No, I just kind of feel like, you know, the way that I've written about my family and the way that I've kind of written characters inspired by them for the TV show, you'd have to be a very particular kind of sociopath not to, not to kind of like... Have you been on the internet? There are so many of these people out there. It's true, it's true. But, like, if you're... If you watch the show properly, um, like, people respond to it on a really personal... Can I, level. Can, I, that, yeah. can I tell you, speaking of responding to the show on a personal level, yes, my, my parents are big fans of the show. Oh, thank you. Um, thank yeah, you they, 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 they love it. Uh, and when it first came out, they were very excited, obviously, because of, you know, it's a sitcom or you know, involving Chinese people or Asian people. It's very exciting, very much into it. And then, you know, it's funny that you started tonight by saying what was more embarrassing to have a, to have a, a writer as a son or a, a homosexual as a son. Um, my dad... My, Let's, Let's be honest, my sexuality's been in question for most of my life, which is fine. Uh, and, and my dad said to me, Michael, have you thought about, because this, this new show, it's called The Family Law, it's fantastic, it's about this young gay bloke, it's fantastic, bloody love it. Have you thought about maybe just telling everyone that, you know, you're gay? Because it seems like that's a good way to get ahead in, in your career. So you're, you're rampant, constant mercantile thoughts of an Asian parent. Like, is there an angle where you can make money out of this? <laughs> so, in his mind, your rampant heterosexuality is holding you back in life, is that right? Well, in, no, in his mind, he's just like, well, this isn't working, why don't we try something else? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 that, it's, it's that thing of, like, I love that. I, I, it's just, um, I think it's that thing of, like, uh, the progressivism of... A lot of Asian families in Australia, it's very practical. Yes, respect, you yes, know what I mean? absolutely. It has, nothing, it has nothing to do with actual gay rights. <laughs> it's literally, that's like, you get a shot at this one, we'll give it a crack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Asia have to be practical with everything. If you're an artist, how good is a proper job? How good you have food on the table, pay rent and all that? Mm. When she, Asian mothers say... Oh, that was, a, that was a book that... Uh, Some people, they say, oh, they always use their, they use their mother to make money. How much they sell for fourteen ninety nine? How much money you can bloody make? And then Ben's, uh, Ben's writing a play about hoarding. Mum moved out from a childhood house. Mum have to like 
kept everything and all that. Yeah, the play. Yeah. And then people would say, see, even the play is talking about the mother, using the mother to make money. Okay. But she gets Prepare for that. Money. Yeah. <laughs> Like, like, yeah, some, pretty, some people criticize. But how do you feel They about use that their mother people... to make money, but that shit Asian mother says it's only $14.99. <laughs> you know, also... how much money you can make? Do, 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 do you get a sweet cut out of that, don't, don't, don't you? That's great for you. Yeah, like, you know. Does it, does it bother you when people think that, one, you're being exploited, or two, that they know more about you than they should? No, not really. Like, like because like, um, no, not exploited. Like, everybody's individual. That's me. I don't call it hoarding. I just call it sentimental. <laughs> but the other thing is, but the other thing as well is like you're also writing from your own perspective mm. for for this book as well. You know, mum and I, mum and I went on the project. Uh, to to write about this book, and it was kind of like great to see how many people <laughs> became such a huge fan of Jenny from from that appearance. I shot myself too because projects no script nothing because we went on uh, sunrise before everything is scripted. But yeah, that, on that project, really when I look back, I said when I was on sunrise, Ben was quite nervous too because mom first time on TV, and the last minute call she asked me a question that's not scripted. And then Ben must be shitting himself, sat next to me, oh bloody hell, this is not scripted, what mum's going to answer now? <laughs> but project is not scripted anything, nothing, but um, yeah, I felt really relaxed and when I watch back, it's like, oh, okay, it's good. When you watch back, it's... Yeah, project. It's, it's the project of Sunrise. It's so no, this, this, is, this is the project many project. years later to talk about this book. And uh, if you watch the, the footage back, it's very, very funny. But it's debatable whether Mum actually sexually harasses Peter Helly alive on national television. <laughs> because before the camera's on, I, uh, because he already had three kids, Peter Helly, I love him. I said, how many more kids are you going to have? And then he said, oh, last week I had my vasectomy when the camera's not on. And yeah, that's what he told me. You're sharing that information here. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And then she started tickling him. Yeah, I tickled uh, him. I made sure I tickled him. It was, it was a very... What? Yeah, yeah. she was tickling him, but as, almost as the camera was rolling. Before the camera was rolling. Where the sex me happened? Or? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, just, just on his arms. Yeah, yes. when, the, uh, when we were on that day, a week before he had the work set to me. <laughs> but I said to him, like, my Tammy had a friend, he had a work set to me, but... His partner got pregnant even after he had vaccinated to me. So this conversation was straight like, to them saying, and we're on. Oh, so you were talking to Even the man had vaccinated to me, the woman still can get pregnant. So the woman better have a tube tie or cut and vaccinated to me. You, you don't want fat. any more babies. She was saying this to Peter Hellier, a man he, she had just met. <laughs> <laughs> and he was loving it. <laughs> wow, so, so in, in terms of... Uh, doing a press tour with your mother then, you talked about Sunrise. Uh -huh. and I feel, is there a story there at the Sunrise thing you want to talk about? Or? Uh, look, so basically in 2010 when the book, The Family Law, came out, mm. we were invited to go on Sunrise and talk about it. And so we're not, talking, we're talk is, is 2010, is that, is that the Melon Koshy era? Or is that the... It was Mel 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 Koshy. Koshy. It's all scripted. Yeah, yeah right. But it was all scripted, except Koshy then went off script. So we were told, okay, so it, we've got to keep it clean, we've got to keep it G-rated, we can't talk about sex, we can't talk about childbirth, blah, blah, blah. And then Koshi goes... about childbirth? Well, because, like, because mum's so frank about childbirth in oh. chapter two of the Oh, he board. asked me, what's your advice for all the new mum out there? What's I said, advice? I can write a book for all the new mum out there. And then it's only a few seconds. I said, oh, choose, try to, not choose to be, have a Caesar. Just push. But it was just, it went down no this whole, Caesar. like, Caesarian tangent, like, oh. on national television. That's my advice to all the new mum out there. Yeah, it was yeah. it was really it was odd television. I haven't <laughs> yeah, yeah, the last it's, question. It's, it's, it's on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. Ben shooting maybe. himself. Yeah. Oh my god, he's not. Like yeah. So I think this is this is as we ran out ran out this discussion. I think it's quite a rarity for uh, for someone in the arts to be working not just so closely with their mother, but also someone who they get along with 
uh, someone who encourages them, who's I guess who is responsible for their encouragement at such a young age as well. So, uh, can, can you talk to uh, Ben? I'll start with you. Can you talk to what it's like to be working with your mum so closely over these over this many years? Yeah, I mean, not, not just as a subject of, of your writing, but yeah, also as a participant yeah. as well. Well, when I when I look back at the span of my life. Um, you know, even though I didn't grow up with this idea of being a writer, I did grow up with a lot of books in my life. Like, I can't remember a time where I wasn't reading. And I think I took that completely for granted. But when I look back, that's really because of mum. You know, books were never considered an extravagance. Our library memberships were always very robust. Book fair was a very, very exciting thing in our household. And when, like, right up from grade one onwards, when you'd have, like, a reader book you have to take home and you have to get it marked off by your mum um, to read, mum and I would sit together in bed every night doing that. She was so diligent and she would record our voices of us reading the book. Five minutes a week reading. I love the skill. Are, reading. Those, those archives are somewhere. You'd, wait, you'd record your children reading books. Yeah, because when we're reading, I can't video him, so I take recording <laughs> his voice. That's why now we have a very intimate, he called me bum, because I want to practice it, I want to have good manners and all that. So when we finish the reading, he's only in grade one. And then I took my those big video camera, the, my first video camera. I said to Ben, say, what do you say to mom? And then he said, bye bum. <laughs> bye bum. <laughs> So that continues to this day. I yeah. still call her Bum. My nickname um, from Ben's Bum. And, you know, like, it's it's kind of really gratifying mm. to... Because, you know, so much of my career is is a very isolated experience and as, as all writing and writers can feel sometimes, um, you know, it's a very kind of solo project. But to have Mum often as an inspiration of what I'm writing or... In, in some, some cases, cases, a direct, direct collaborator. Mm. Um, that, that's, that's really great. great. Mm. And, um, you, you know, know, I'm not going to lie, that it's pretty cool, cool that mum, you know, mum can earn some money out of that, that, that as well, you know, because uh, she, she works, she has worked for a really long time unpaid, and the fact that, you know, people are mm. really, really keen to hear her thoughts, and, um, you know. I suppose lots of full time mum out there too. Yeah, yeah. full-time mum, you yeah. know, yeah. So it's nice. People take you for grants, so like, yeah, yeah you like, mm, full-time mum. Um, I feel like I've let this conversation get away with this because I was so enthralled by it. Uh, do we have time for audience questions or are we, are we okay? For like one or two? Do we have ten minutes, all right. So is, do, do, uh, do we have a spare microphone for the audience? Maybe I can, maybe we can hand this one around and I can switch to this one very seamlessly. Uh, so, do, do, no, we can't. All right. A switch. Hello. Uh, so let's start. Let's start uh, at the back of the room. Is anyone is, is anyone interested in asking a question of uh, of Ben or Jenny at all? No, or anywhere else? I thought I thought this would be a I thought this would be the popular part of the evening. <laughs> Who would have thought that people choosing to go to a library on a Thursday night would be chai? Uh, <laughs> is, there, is there no audience questions? Surely, surely people. Are, oh, there's one. There's, we'll start at the back then, uh, and then we'll come to you, madam. Oh no, we'll start with you, madam, and we'll go to the back. I actually don't want to ask a question. I just want to say a very large thank you for your honesty and everything that family law was because I grew up in country New South Wales and I can still remember coming down to Sydney as a very young girl and going to Chinatown and seeing ducks hanging in, a, hanging in the front of a shop and going, oh my God. So it's a two-way street, the whole cultural thing. But the fact was that your direct honesty and just the love that you all showed, we see that in families. You know, I come from a family that has that. I come from a family that has taught, has been taught to respect the mother, to respect the parents. And if you look at Middle Australia, honestly, they all want doctors and lawyers too. <laughs> well, thank you very much for that. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, at the, the back, sir, do you have a question? Yeah, hi, thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask, I, I think, Jenny, particularly considering, like, obviously the show is, uh, the show Family Law is uh, fictionalised versions of you and your family, but... Were there ever points watching the show, uh, considering you're such a, a, an honest and frank person, were there ever points where watching the show you regretted being so honest and frank and now seeing these things like publicly portrayed across the country? Sure, we want to know about your regrets. <laughs> no, not really, because Ben will send us the, the scripts. scripts. Yes, yeah. So we respect the, the whole family. So I agree with everything oh, so and you, all that's you, going to be in the show. 
Were you allowed to veto stuff? Were you allowed to cross it out? How dare you tell this story? <laughs> what are the secrets? What got cut? <laughs> some actually is uh, non-fiction and some is fiction. So oh. only the family knew, but yeah. Oh, and I see. then people ask, is that real? What? Which part is real? Which part is not real? <laughs> yeah. Season one, when Tammy and Michelle still quite young, the new that chapter oh, about it's a, it's the, like the, the onsen one, they yeah, the, the freak the out. Bar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're quite young back then, season one, like, tell me, Michelle, like, I said, like, it's, they said, oh, they can imagine me and Tammy and Jerry are going to be nude in Japan or what? It's so funny. <laughs> yeah, now they're totally fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, let's get some other questions. Is there on this side of the audience who'd like to ask a, a question of Ben or Jenny? Go back to this side. Is anyone? Oh, yes, you, madam. Uh, let's get a microphone to you, uh, if you wouldn't mind. Where did you? Um, Where did you? From? Yeah, yeah. From. from. Myself? You talk? No, you probably asking Jenny. Jenny. Yes. I uh, was oh. so asking, where did you immigrate from? Yes. Um, Malaysian Chinese. I was born in Malaysia, a small town called Ipo. Yeah, Malaysian Chinese. Mm. Ipo is renowned. We were always told growing up that Ipo was renowned for its beautiful women. And because we were just ignorant and food, and food. we were like, yeah, whatever, mom. And then you go to Ipo, and then, then you realize one, it's true, and two, it has that reputation as well. But then you moved to Hong Kong at what age? Uh, nearly 15. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Migrant to Hong Kong when, like, Ipo is. Um, political unrest. So my father got a vision, we have to migrate to Hong Kong. Mm, because yeah. Malay, they're killing Chinese. Yeah. yeah. So, so you fled yeah. to Hong yeah, Kong, and then Hong from Kong. Hong Kong you came to Australia. Yeah. And, and the, 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 the day, day after mum um, flew, uh, mum's family flew, flew, flew from Ipoh to Hong, to Hong Kong, Kong it was one, one of the biggest anti-Chinese kind of riots slash massacres in Kuala Lumpur, not where they, they were, right. but, 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 but in Malaysia, yeah. 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 had kind of bubbled over. Um, well, that's a, a really intense way to leave things, so I thought <laughs> <laughs> what we might do just to sort of lighten them. Oh, is, is there one more question? Let's yeah. do one more question, and then I've got a, I've got, we've got a special surprise for everybody uh, to round this out. So, oh, madam, uh, yes. One. Uh, any projects in the works that are going to have you guys collaborate, oh, yes. collaborating together what's, again? What's the next project, Mum? <laughs> well, I'm, 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 I'm writing perhaps. a play about yeah. Mum again, hoarding. <laughs> Well, there's a play that's a, there's a play that I'm working on for Melbourne Theatre Company, uh, but then there's just some other stuff as well. So, co-hosting a radio show at the moment for ABC, and co-hosting a new um, show about startups that's starting up soon too. Yeah. Go to Opera House second September. About oh yeah, 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 yeah. Then we're going to do another event at Antidote at the Opera House, which will be slightly different. Probably cost m more money to go to this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys got to really. Yeah. This is good value tonight. Great value. <laughs> Thank you, the City of Sydney. Uh, all right. So what I thought just before we end this, uh, just before we bring tonight to an, uh, a close, we've got a. Uh, I don't know if you guys know about this. We've got a slideshow of. Of, of photos of Ben and, and yourself from from growing up. Uh, where, where, where's, where's this one? That's very that's a very cool sense of style. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Interestingly, oh, no like, hat. See you watch it. Uh, meet where you see now. It's Metway. Sun now it's a now it's a cop. Sun no, Sun oh, Sun 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 Sorry, Sun Cop Metway. Yeah, but it used to be yeah. Metway yeah. back. Yeah. Yes. Definitely on his coat. This photo. Uh, this is me in my Sea World shirt. Very Love cool. Sea World. Uh, let's keep let's keep moving through yes, these slides. Oh, oh. Okay. okay. This is this is a cute photo, right. but now it's slightly chilling. Because, that rabbit right. Dream world. It's, it's on that dream world. You love right, that right. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, this was the Sunshine Coast. Oh, where, where are you in this one? Nambu, that bridge. Nambu, oh, yeah. that bridge. I'm the one Nambu, with the T-Rex screen printed shirt. I screen printed that shirt bridge, uh, with my bare Nambu. hands. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Nambu. Are you wearing American I'm flag Nambu. shorts, Ben? I think I might be. Michelle's in your stomach. Yeah. Is this the family yeah. house? Wasn't no, this is like a this is like a spring carnival at at school, I think. And, and that's, that's kind of like our squad photo because oh, I feel like Ben used to be the gymnastic. Cool. He yeah, he used to be a gymnastic. Oh, I was a childhood gymnast. I was very good. <laughs> so you're saying they were. Oh, this great one at the school. 
So, so there's a play, yeah. uh, somebody of the play, the Aborigines. You're He's the only Asian, who else? The teacher choose him. I hand painted him. Wait, so the teacher... Lucky he wasn't allergic to the paint. How, how old were you? The, He's a chosen six, one, six, who else? Old? Aborigines. So this is appalling. This is... Um... Oh my god, so this is, you're six or seven years old, and just to, just to, just to read... Double down on what Jason said. The, the teacher needed someone to play an Indigenous Australian in a class play. Yes, I mean, when I say I grew up in a really white part of Australia, we also in grew up in a pretty a racist place. part. So you want to mention the school name? We'll get the we'll get the we'll get the Chinese guy and we'll and we'll. Paint well, okay. Them. So so basically, they need okay. There, this this photo is already wrong, but there are other there are other levels of wrong here because we were seeing a song about Aboriginal people by Rolf Harris. Uh, and, yeah, and then we were all issued, yeah, it was grade one, bicentennial year, and we were all issued black body paint to play homage to our first Australians. It was messed up. So is this, is this photo private or publicly available? Because you're, you're, you're kind of frequently thought of as the most woke person in Australia, but I feel like if this got out... I feel like it's out now. <laughs> Like, Richard's father's wife. What, all the time about, she saw this photo, oh, she's seen she that. She's seen that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do we it's got true. here? This is the Sunshine Coast Helicopter Rescue. Okay, okay so, so we, there, you know, like, Gold Coast has, like, a lot of great theme parks and things, but the Sunshine Coast has weird things like the metal shop or something, oh. the helicopter. We, we just loved that That's stuff. Good. Yes. Well, I think that was like, maybe the big pineapple also. or something this like is, that. I, this, is this the, first, this the first iteration of the hats? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This, is, this, is, this is the proto hat trend. And this is just us. I feel like we're doing, you know William Yang, the Chinese-Australian <laughs> photographer? I feel like we're doing that, but a much more abridged and shit version. Um, oh, this is us and a white baby, um, just because. Oh, you can see the baby. Yeah, yeah, but there's a baby down there. Um, and that's Michelle, so she's just moved to Sydney. But if any of you saw um, a play at Belvoir called Single Asian Female, Michelle wrote that. And if you've also seen... If you've gone on to SBS On Demand lately, you would have seen a show called Homecoming Queens advertised. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Homecoming Queens. Homecoming Queens is SBS On Demand's first first original commission, like, just made for SBS On Demand, and Michelle co-stars and uh, co-wrote it. Yep. Very, very good. This is a, this is a, a very punk rock-esque Ben Law. Um, this, is, this is us... Uh, very recent, this one in Hong Kong. Yeah. You know, Ladies like, market. when we go back to Hong Kong, we have so many relatives, it really feels like we're re related to all 7 million people on the peninsula. Um, and this, this photo captures that, I think. I think there's yeah. 21 oh, of us and nice. have a group family photo. There's not all of us. Mm. How old are you in this one? Ben? Um, this 12. Young, this is a young uh, <laughs> Ben Law. I'm actually 57, but I just moisturise. Um, season one or two, uh, Camille, this, Camille this Day. This might have been season three. So, so look, in the family law, for those of you who are train spotters, um, my whole family makes a cameo appearance every oh, season. Oh, every season they want us to be a cameo. You get, if you, you blame, you miss us. Yeah, if you right. blame. Yeah. You get and wheeled out to take a photo of being the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 My, my family loves it because they're like, yeah, yeah we, we get some fun. money. And yeah. two, catering. They're really excited about the catering. <laughs> we stay there for the whole day. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and this is this is me and my my boyfriend with mum. And I guess like the other part of this story is like Asian parents aren't traditionally that you know, cool mm. with, with same-sex relationships necessarily. And mum really bucked that trend really early on. Like, I came out to her when I was 17 years old and mum's response was hilarious. It will be captured I love in... <laughs> mum's like, I loved how I like responded. Yeah. Yeah. What, what was your response? What, what, was, what, was, what, was, what oh, did you say? Ben, like, close to tears and all that. Awesome. You know how... You, you very see emotional your mom's moment. down, yeah. and oh, mom, I have a very serious, important thing to tell you. And then I still remember, like yesterday, so we sat down, and then I said, I'm guessing, I said, Do you make like, like somebody pregnant, Rebecca? I thought they're a couple at school. Yeah, no, Rebecca. Mom, it couldn't be further from the truth. He said, No, <laughs> oh, you're not, yeah. you're drunk. Mm -hmm. And then I said, You're gay. And then, yeah. And then he cried like a baby. Yeah. He have no idea what I'm gonna 
like might broke mom's heart. Yeah. I don't know how mom's going to respond. But I just respond like, I'm like, oh, you're my son. Oh, I said that must be something went wrong inside my womb. <laughs> <laughs> nature, that's what I mean, nature. And some of my friends, they say, oh, Jenny, you blame yourself. I said, no, I'm not blaming myself, nature. Yeah. That's part of that nature. resulted in the deformity you see before you. <laughs> <laughs> is that an accurate? Is that an accurate representation? It's a natural thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's, exactly, that's, that's exactly. That's exactly, that's exactly how it went. Because even though, though it was such an emotional moment, moment the way that mum expressed it, I just thought, oh yeah, that's mum. I, I think just after she sexually harassed Peter Hellier. Yeah, <laughs> he loved it. Um, yeah. That was actually, that was pretty funny. Um, but yeah, the mum's just been like, it, it's so funny, like, you can't quite see it in that photo, but she was wearing, she was wearing like a rainbow flag badge that night as well, because it was coming up to the postal survey, and I don't know, it was just incredibly um, great seeing, like, my family's accepted me and my boyfriend for a really long time, but to see how vocal they were during that period was, was really great. Yeah, Ben really wanted to come up uh, before he start uni. So, very young, 16, 17. 17. So, yeah, gradually, uh, the best friend, the first one who came up, Rebecca, and then mom is the second one, and slowly the rest of the siblings. Mm. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, what do we got here? This is... Well, that's uh, end, end, end of, of slideshow. Slide slide this end final one, yeah, where, where was this one taken? Uh, I'm not sure, but we look... Oh, oh no, no, no. Oh, we're at a wedding. Yeah, we're at a heterosexual wedding. And, um, yeah, no, that would have been that would have been my sister Candy's wedding. Oh, it must be up Noosa, the Sunshine Coast, uh, Perijuan Beach. She, she supports the gays and the straights, Mum. She's good like that. <laughs> yeah, go anywhere where there's a wedding. It's fantastic. Um... All right, well, that's the end of the slideshow. Uh, I, I feel like, yeah, we, we, we've sort of run out of time. I kind of let this conversation uh, get away from us, but it was so interesting. Uh, can I ask you guys just to thank uh, Jenny and Ben for being here this evening? Thank you, Michael. Really fascinating.